These are the basic tools you'll need to work on a residential 120 volt electrical system. This video focuses on tools you'll need to install or repair fixtures, switches, receptacles you'll commonly see in homes. You can add to these basic tools many things like fish tape for fishing wires through walls and other things that an electrician apprentice might need, but that kind of thing is out of the scope of this video. These tools can be used by contractors such as myself or homeowners doing their own work themselves. Here are some of the basic tools that I take on every job. They include uh, your hammer, pens, pencils, awls, ratcheting screwdriver with different bits. That green thing is for my knees. Multi-tool with pliers, various bits, allen wrenches, sockets, drill bits, extra water, things like gloves, shoe coverings, uh, earplugs, face masks. So here one thing to remember if you're working on an electrical you're going to be turning the electricity off so you're going to be in the dark. So it's good to have different flashlights, different shop lights, any kind of shop light. Uh, the headlamp is very useful. This one runs by batteries. You can buy the rechargeable ones. Very bright LED shop light there. This is a contactless voltage tester. Basically put it up to a wire to see if it's live. As you can see, it lights up red and beeps if the wire is live. But you also want to test with a something like a multimeter. That's a continuity tester. This one is an easy way to test uh, 120 volts. This one's a receptacle tester. You plug it in and you'll see if something's wrong. It shows you right there what exactly is wrong. And that one tests the GFCI function. See if a GFCI is good. Here we see it in action. If you see two lights on this particular one, then it's good wired properly it's working properly correct wiring don't need, don't need to test the GFCI here and here's another little quick way to test to see if it's live 120 volts and you can also put one lead in the hot and one lead anywhere metal to see if it's grounded if it's grounded, the 120 volts will return through the ground and it lights up just like that. So you know this is grounded. We'll need various bags of supplies such as wire nuts, screws, things like that. This is part of a, uh, a breaker finder system. You can plug it into either a light fixture or you, ha you have leads that can test wires and then you take this part down to the service panel and you'll hear a tone beeping which will get stronger over the correct breaker. It's very helpful because obviously if you're working on a circuit you're going to have to turn that circuit off, turn that breaker off. You're not going to want to work on a, a live circuit. Here we go into various small parts, different parts. This is a tiny screwdriver for getting into tight spaces. Very helpful to have various different uh, different parts. And this part here will strip Romex, so you can go real easily through the insulation to be able to strip the wires. tape. You're going to want to have it different colors, different size bolts, grounding screw there.
other parts, electrical tape of different colors, staples, things like that. More parts, switches and receptacles. This right here is a bit that I use to drill through studs, get wires through it. Nut driver, various sizes, pretty helpful. Real easy to switch the sizes. And pliers, pliers of various kinds and sizes. This one is a Stanley and it actually also has wire strippers. So it's alignment pliers or you could use wire strippers such as that. If you're in a tight spot you might want to use a smaller one. Also has an angle cutter. You can cut wires, you can twist wires, really thin needle nose pliers, and those are insulated up to 600 volts. So here you have your multi tester. You can have a totally different video about how to work it, but I, I like to keep one in the car, keep one with my electrical tools. I like this Klein Tools uh, multimeter. Basically, you can use it for safety to see if something's live. You can see if something's working properly. Right there, you have your AC voltage. Put it to 200, test to see if you have 120 volts. You also have current, testing a battery. That's a continuity tester, testing resistance, and then testing DC voltage. Like I said, you can search for videos on how to actually work it. Here, I'm gonna test a battery some basic functions. I'm going to test a 9 volt battery, see if I have in fact 9 volts. And as you can see, I don't, so that's a bad battery. I wouldn't use that in a multi tester. Testing a double uh, A battery here. One lead on the bottom, other lead on the positive there. And there you go, I do have 1.5 volts, so that's a good battery. So you can use the uh, contactless voltage tester in conjunction with the multimeter for for safety for working on uh, on your electric. You want to make sure it's not a live circuit, it's not hot wires. So here I'm going to test how to strip this nifty little stripper here. Cut it with the pliers pretty easily. put it in properly. This one actually might not be as sharp as it used to be. Okay, I kind of messed it up there, but if you, uh, if you put it in properly, it'll cut right there just like that. Real easy. Rather than taking the uh, box cutter or whatever. Like I said, this particular one is also a wire stripper. Put it in the uh, 14 gauge slot. This one is a 14 gauge wire. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to cut both sides of it and then 
use the pliers to twist together one of the conductors Again, the scope of this video is just the tools. Uh, for basic wiring, you'd have to look at another video, but uh, basically what I'm doing here is I'm using the tool to twist together the conductors first, and then you put a wire nut on it. Uh, also, note that I didn't cut too much off of the insulation so that there'll be no bare copper showing. So I'm going to just twist these together and you can cut off the tip and then put on a wire nut. There you go. And of course you turn it really tight, test it, pull out the, the wire, see if it comes out, and then then you'll know it's nice and tight. So there you have it, the must-have tools for doing electrical work. Whether you're a contractor doing basic jobs like installing appliances or swapping out light fixtures, or you're a homeowner and need to do some basic repairs or installations like changing a receptacle or switch. As always, look at your local laws if you are allowed to work on the electrical in your home. Not included in this video would be a ladder to reach light fixtures. And anything else, please let me know in the comments if I left anything out for doing basic electrical work. At the very least, these tools should be the bare minimum to safely work on electrical work. Of course, if you are not competent or qualified to do work on anything involving electricity, Hire a professional.